Hello, my name is Stuart Hamlin and welcome to this special edition of a FitSit lesson. It's special because it features this chair which was sent to me to play with by Dr Turner Osler. Now, Dr Turner Osler is a very interesting man indeed. Uh, he is a former academic trauma surgeon who switched fields to begin to research, amongst other things, why there is such a high incidence of back pain amongst the North American population uh, at a huge cost medically to treat those people. And as a result of his research, Dr. Turner Osler began to look at how you might change a chair to improve a person's posture and sitting and he and his team have devised active sitting chairs and this chair is one of the models that he has produced for adult users. But what I particularly um, have found very interesting about Dr Osler's work he, is that he shares my passion for changing the way that we sit and move in a chair and he and his team have come up with a design called the button chair, button, button chair, um, for children in schools. And Dr. Osler has effectively, through his website, and I'll post the details of a TED talk he made and his website in the notes below the video, but he and his team have come up with a design for a, a stool that can be very cheaply made throughout the world for children to sit on, which creates again um, an unstable surface. So rather than school kids being nailed down to a chair and being told not to move, the, the, the button chair effectively creates a very playful experience in which the kids begin to squiggle and move uh, around, getting their spines moving in a much more healthy way than static sitting um, would involve. It's interesting for me because Dr Turner has obviously approached this issue um, from the point of view of the chair environment, whereas my work is very much focused um, not so much on the chair, but the way that people use the chair and the way that they sit in the chair. And my FitSit program is very much about um, showing people that a chair can be in fact a wonderful opportunity not just to exercise but to actually improve their functional movement skills so that when they come to walking um, they are able to weight transfer through their skeleton more efficiently. Anyway, I was delighted to have the opportunity to play on this chair and I thank Dr Turner Osler very much. Um, so this is one of the models, it's called an aerial, and you'll see it has a very nice seat, but it has a smooth surface. And for my purposes, I needed to adapt that um, to give it a little bit more traction. And so what I did was cut out an old piece of yoga mat to um, sit, put on the seat of the chair. The chair itself, this model has got stable feet, you can get um, wheels for it as well. And it also, the stool, the chair stool is height, height adjustable. I have it on the lowest level um, for what I, I want to do and want to show you. And I won't go into the technical details, but it's just amazing actually the design of the, of the base that sits underneath the seat that creates this unstable surface. Anyway, let's give it a go and have some fun. <laughs> When you come to sit on the chair, what you're immediately um, struck by is its instability. And of course, what that does is it gives your brain and your nervous system real-time information about where you are in space. The instability 
creates a difference between one side and the other and once you have a difference this is what neuroplasticity is all about you have information that you can act on and what often happens of course with many people in sitting is they have a habit of sitting on one side their spine might be rounded and um, uh, the the information from this chair gives them information which they can use to restore balance and it's interesting some of the videos that I've watched already by other people who have used these chairs they're very much focused on its ability to create good posture good posture whilst maybe sitting at a desk or a computer um, my interest though is on how this chair might help a person to learn some of these functional movement patterns which are the ABCs of all good movement and for those of you who know my work one of the very first lessons I teach in the FitSit program is the ability to side bend through weight transference through the pelvis and the spine. See, many people when you ask them to bring their weight onto one sit bone they do this this kind of thing. They tilt the spine as a piece, clench the jaw and lift the opposite foot to, to help them and um, you can see how tilting the spine may be bringing weight on, over onto one side but it puts the person at increased risk of falls amongst other things and what is a much more functionally useful pattern is the ability to transfer weight through side bending. So I'm deliberately allowing my weight to pour down onto one sit bone through the pelvis and then onto the other sit bone um, through the pelvis. So it's like the pelvis is a bowl and the chair helps me to really sense that ability to transfer weight down into one side and then the other and of course once you um, uh, find this movement in the pelvis of course the ribs are part of this you can see how when I bring my weight onto my left sit bone so I'm mirroring for the purposes of the video my left ribs I'm allowing to move out my left shoulder I'm allowing to move to the left and slightly up as part of this side bending and then on to the other side and you can see if you're able to side bend in this way you're, I'm able to keep my head and eyes floating on the horizon which I, so it's available to look around um, uh, for um, uh, uh, what's going on either prey or, or predators so my balance isn't compromised as I transfer weight through one side to the other once you um, have the ability to side bend then of course you have the ability to walk walk through weight transference so now it's not so easy to show that on this chair as it would be on a flat chair but you can still use the chair to practice the ability to walk through weight transference so what i'm doing here is i'm letting my weight come on to my left side, I keep my feet where they are but take my right knee back and keep it back, transfer the weight through side bending onto the right sit bone and then move my left knee back, keeping the foot where it is, transfer the weight onto the left sit bone and then I can begin to come forward again. So I think of the right knee coming forward, transfer weight onto the right side let the left knee come forward, transfer weight onto the left side, so it enables me to practice this ability to shift my weight not just from side to side but backwards and forwards. And if you think about walking and standing, that's exactly the pattern that uh, enables to walk efficiently as opposed to this this kind of thing this tilting waddling waddling action <clears throat> and
another very functional um, useful ability that we need to be able to live in this world is the ability to look around ourselves and again the chair this chair is a very interesting place to explore that possibility so I have a number of options I can bring my weight onto my left sit bone move my right knee back and of course what that does it helps the pelvis to move back and then I'm able to turn to look around myself on the horizon and then I can come back to center I can also practice turning keeping my weight on both sit bones letting one knee come forward and the other back which is more of a rotation around the axis of my spine and of course because I'm, I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner you can introduce all sorts of differentiations of bringing the head forward keeping the head in the middle moving the eyes right and left and you can also begin to turn this into a flexion and extension pattern you see what happens with many people as they get older they begin to move just from the neck and in my Fitzit lessons what we're trying to teach a person amongst other things is 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 using the whole of the spine and the pelvis to look up and down and again it's very interesting how the chair makes the movement of the pelvis and the spine much more accessible and here's where you can see why I added the extra bit of yoga mat because if I didn't have that because I'm wearing smooth uh, material in my shorts I could quite easily slip off the edge so um, it's a useful adaptation for the work that that I'm interested in so lots of useful spinal flexion and extension patterns another great thing you can do is explore twists in a different way so I've shown similar things on a swivel chair but let me show you on on this chair so I can keep my chest looking forward and my head and eyes looking forward and walk my feet round to get a lovely lengthening twist now can you see what often happens with people is when they take a twist they roll off the sit bones roll off the sit bones which means that the spine is shortened as they're twisting which is not so healthy so the chair helps you to find a lengthened spine and another thing that often happens with twists is that people actually push the ribs forward meaning they're arching their back as they're twisting and again the chair gives you some very interesting feedback to make sure that you're neither either overly arched or overly pushed so you're really getting a lengthening twist and then come back now let's do that to the other side now again because i'm a feldenkrais practitioner you can begin to take the head with the knee head with the knees but keep the chest looking forward i've got to look at the camera and then come back you can keep your eyes looking forward as you begin to turn everything else away away from the the eyes and then come back and then you can also do a whole series of flexion movements that uh, I love to explore in my Fitzit classes where you bring one hand behind the uh, head, so elbow to the side, you turn to look towards the elbow to get this lovely arch, even arch in the spine and then you bring it to the opposite knee. So again, I just take a in the chair it's very very interesting the properties of the chair because it's really ha making me have to think of where my pelvis is in space and how how it's organized so i just wanted to use this video to show you some of the properties of the chair that um, can really help a person to find some of these movements which maybe in a ordinary chair would not be quite as accessible. I also though, um, uh, what I found fascinating about this chair is I've been really using it to work on my own spine. So when I do a side bending action, see which I showed, showed before, can you see how I'm 
bringing my weight onto one sit bone and then onto the other sit bone. So that's a pattern we need in walking, the ability to, to shift weight, to shift weight onto one leg through side bending and then onto the other. But it's also very interesting that if I, if I don't go into a full sit bone and play with the balance, so with a much more narrow base, but a uh, narrow base, I'm just exploring, letting my weight come down a little bit to my right hand side and then to my left hand side. Now, notice I'm not letting myself completely side bend. I'm keeping my upper body sort of perched, perched above the base of support. And, and effectively, this would be like, say you're on a, a ship, you're, you're trying to, to balance this way. So I'm not trying to shift the weight onto one side. I'm just trying to adjust so that my head and eyes stay on the horizon as the surface is moving, moving underneath me. And one of the things I'm able to do is really by just going very, very slowly, I can feel how I'm beginning to reach reach into different vertebrae along my along my spine so I'm just effectively side bending um, or bringing the weight onto one side and I can feel feel that exploring different as the curve develops along my spine it enables me if I go slowly and carefully to kind of find that area of the spine that might be a little say, stiffer or it's not quite side bending with the other vertebrae. And then I can come back and I can explore going the other, other way to see, ah, oh, I can go explore different vertebrae, I can bring them one after the other into the, the side bending. And then when I come to an area that I think merits a little bit further exploration, I can stay there and then introduce a bit of rotation. So I'm, I'm keeping the shoulders forward, I'm staying with my weight just slightly to one side and moving that vertebrae that I'm interested in relative to the one, one above. Let me just show you what I mean by that. Very, 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 very interesting. See, normally I'd have to go to another Feldenkrais practitioner to give me a lesson um, to do this. But it's uh, what I'm doing there, I'm just, just gently bringing weight to... Oh, my model is a bit wonky. I'm gently just beginning to bring a little movement to exploring one vertebrae and then the other. And then when I get to, say, an area that feels a little bit, bit stuck, I keep this, that slight side bending, and then I'm rotating, rotating that part of the spine that I've engaged in the side bend relative to the part of the spine above it. It's a fascinating thing to, to do yourself. And then once I've done that, so as I'm turning the bottom part relative to the other, it's improving that mobility in that area. And then once I've, I've explored that, I can then go back to that area and say, oh, actually, actually, the movement has now gone into the next vertebrae above and above. So just really kind of exploring finer movements in my spine. I don't expect you to do any of that and um, not even to necessarily to understand what I'm talking about. Um, but I've had huge fun on one of these chairs. I'll leave the details, as I've mentioned, in the information below. And um, my personal thanks to Dr. Turner Osler and his team for the um, great work that they're doing. Thank you.